DBS has been used to treat uh, diseases like Parkinson's and essential tremor since the early 90s in the US. Um, and it's, uh, it's an adjustable therapy that's delivering electrical stimulation to certain parts of the brain to help with symptoms of these diseases. The brain wires and the wires connecting the brain wires to the battery, those stay the same. Um, we uh, had a patient recently who uh, had deep brain stimulation for his Parkinson's. Uh, it helped him a fair bit. Um, the older style batteries, a lot of them um, are, uh, they're, they're, they're what we call primary cell batteries, so they're not rechargeable. Um, this gentleman, uh, unfortunately, ended up in the hospital over the 4th of July weekend because his battery had died and he didn't realize that. Um, and again, with, with uh, Parkinson's patients, if you take away their deep brain stimulation, it could be like not getting your medications. And so he couldn't move. He could, he could barely raise his arms off the bed. He wasn't talking. Uh, it would take him about, um, you know, 30 seconds to say his name. Um, and uh, basically, his, he couldn't be at home. It kind of just coincided with the Percep being released by the FDA um, that he would be the first here. Uh, but in general, with those patients, we try and replace those batteries as soon as we can. Uh, and once you do so, he you know, was, was able to talk and move again. So um, in terms of uh, this, this first case, it was kind of a, an urgent sort of unexpected uh, replacement. Um, but it, it goes like any other battery replacement. It's an outpatient procedure, usually. Um, and you numb the patient up here, you remove the old battery, connect the new one, check the connections, turn it back on, close everything back up, and, and, and you're done. So it takes about 20 minutes. Um, but that can uh, make the difference for him, you know, from being stuck in the hospital to, to being able to at least get out of the hospital. The patients, especially for Parkinson's, when you're, when you're getting these treatments, a lot of the reason people get DBS is because their medications aren't controlling their, their symptoms in a very constant way. They're, they have what we call motor fluctuations. So they're um, sometimes great, sometimes terrible, and going back and forth. And that unpredictability makes it very hard for them to, to stay active and, 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 and continue uh, with a good quality of life. Uh, so, uh, you know, deep brain stimulation in general increases the amount of on time, meaning increases the amount of time where they're feeling good with their medications without side effects, um, getting the benefits. Um, so, you know, DBS in general does that for them. If we can make this work even better, uh, then uh, again, we'd, we'd be increasing the, the quality of life of, of all these patients. The purpose of this device, uh, sort of, sort of the reason that people came, uh, that they came up with this device is to um, kind of reduce the, the burden on the patient and the, and the doctor in terms of trying to remember, you know, what times of day are, are, are good or bad for you. Um, because the, the, the device itself can uh, take snapshots of the brain activity at certain points in time. Um, or the you can it's actually set up so that the patient can actually um, do that with their with their programming device, which is it's basically a, a little it's a handheld tablet, um, and they can mark certain periods of time, and the device will record a uh, a brief period of brain activity, uh, and the hope is to use that information to better guide therapy. We target a specific part of the brain to put these wires in. Um, and we know that particular part of the brain uh, in Parkinson's has too much of a particular signal. Um, doing deep brain stimulation uh, reduces that signal. Um, giving somebody their Parkinson's medications reduces that signal. Uh, and we see people move better. People have been looking at trying to use brain signals themselves to tell if, if the treatment's effective. Um, and, and the Percept device is kind of a culmination of a lot of this work that people have done. Um, where the device can provide stimulation and record from the brain at the same time. This is a sort of objective uh, a piece of data that we can use and we're not relying on the patient to, to write stuff down, remember to write stuff down. Um, it makes it easier for them. Um, having another piece of information to adjust therapy is really exciting. So potentially seeing what the brain is doing could give you a signal that, okay, if we see this happen, odds are they will have fewer seizures. Um, that could be an important thing to look for when trying to uh, use these types of devices. Looking at what the brain's doing over time um, uh, could, could provide a neurologist with a way to adjust medications, the timing of when patients take them, uh, so that they um, get more of the benefit without the side effects. And especially for, for Parkinson's, um, we do a pretty good job of dealing with it um, overall. You know, we, we know that DBS is safe. We know it's effective. It works better than just taking medications if you pick the right patients. Um, and this can just help make it even better.
you know, the end goal for a lot of these things is one, to have the machine do some of the adjustments itself, um, two, be able to do this without having the patient come into the, you know, the clinic every time they want a, an adjustment. Um, and I think having information like this makes it, uh, you know, more, more feasible to consider doing things remotely.